So we already watched a video on how to use the quick select tool, but that didn't cover a lot of the other details around actually getting the photo and then how to save it and where to put it and how to work with it. So I'm going to try to fill in those gaps for you. What we need to do is first go to the material in Google Classroom where the photo actually is. Inside of those materials, you see not only the video we watched before, but I have two choices on photos to work with. And what is really important is actually that we download it instead of copying it. So I'm going to click on the picture of my choice. And here I don't have my typical choice to download. Normally I would see it already. I need to click my three dots in the corner so that I can open it in a new window. Why do I have to do this? I don't know, but it's an extra step we have to take in order to now click our download, the arrow with the line at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and download this and show you what to do with it. So it's going to pop up down here and I need to show it in the folder. Your downloads are automatically going to go to your download folder, which for you as a student is actually going to get erased periodically. So you do not want to leave it there. I'm going to control X to cut it from the downloads. You can control C um, or control X. Both of them will grab that file. X is going to cut it and control C is going to copy it and then I want you to place it in your number drive. So I don't really have a number drive to show you, for example. So I'm going to just place it um, in my USB drive so that you can see me go ahead and paste it in a new place. So it's super important that we download it and then move it out of the downloads into a folder that actually doesn't get erased periodically like downloads. So I have that. I also want to show you though what happens if we copy instead of downloading. So I'm going to just right click, oops, excuse me. We got to go back to the actual original, not in the new window. I'm going to right click and press copy image. Okay. So we're going to work with both of them so you can see why it makes a difference. Inside of Photoshop, I'm going to open. And what I can do is open if I navigate myself to my USB drive where we just put that image. Remember, it was called, let's see, Gillis Running 2. We're going to open that ever so slowly. And then we're also going to make a new document and paste in the one that we copied. So this is the one that was downloaded. I'm going to say File, New, and I'm going to select the clipboard because Photoshop automatically knows what I have copied. I'm going to choose that. It's going to be the right size for the image that is copied. And now I'm going to Control V to paste. Okay, so I have two of the exact same picture right now. doesn't look like there's any difference between them. However, if you go to Image, Image Size, you will see that this is 5.8 inches wide, 8.7 inches tall at 72 pixels per inch. So that's the resolution that you get on the internet, okay? So that's okay. It'll print out, you know, a half of a sheet of paper. If we go to the one that I downloaded, you can see that it's got the, the name, the file name that we opened. And we go to image, image size. Here, we're looking at seven inches wide, 10 inches tall at 300 pixels per inch. So that is the like four times the resolution and it's still bigger. So that just means that I can get closer in on this image and I have a lot more details on this image 
that will allow me to use my quick select tool easily. So for example, I'm going to control plus 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 because that's how you get closer into something, control plus, versus control minus lets you get further away. So control minus 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 will make it smaller. Control plus 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 plus. I'm going to get to the same point. So I'm looking at the same exact thing, like the legs, and look at how rough those edges look versus, oh, I should get a little closer just to be fair, control plus some more. Those edges look much smoother. So download, oh, excuse me, copied one, downloaded one. This one is going to be harder to use the quick select tool with because those jagged edges make it difficult for the tool to sense what should be part of your selection and what should not be part of your selection. So every time it has to deal with pixelation, it's more likely to grab things that aren't the right things to include. Whereas when you have a lot smoother edges, I need to increase my brush size, it should have an easier time selecting only the right stuff and then the edges look really good as well. So you are more likely to have success, wow I grabbed the whole lower half there, um, if you use a downloaded photo versus a copied and pasted photo. So once I have a good photo and I've done all that, I want to select the whole thing. I'll go back and do, I'll do this really, really quickly so that I can also show you how to download the background. So last time I would say I assumed that that downloading of the background would be easy, but I want to make sure everybody sees how to download before we jump right in and do that. Let me make sure I have a head. Click that, and then the only thing I need to do on this one is remove the space underneath my elbows. I'm going to use my magic wand tool and make sure I'm removing. Take that bit out, Ooh, that bit too and remove that bit and I have a pretty good selection going so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to go ahead and close my copied one. I don't want to get confused by it. I do not need to save so no. And back on the and we are going to find a picture where it looks like a nice place to run. Let's see. On the road here. No. How about, ooh, in the water on a boat? Mm, mm, there, perfect. I'm gonna click download free. And you see it popped up in the bottom like the download we did from Google Classroom before. So same thing, show in folder. And then you see it's in my downloads, which is gonna get deleted from time to time. So we're gonna control X to cut it out of downloads. You're going to put it in your number drive, which I don't really have. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste it into my USB drive. Control V to paste. So there it is. In Photoshop now, I can say File, Open, and find it once again in my USB drive. And what on earth was it called? Let me navigate back to that. It's called this Katerina something, something, something. So let's go to the C's, there we go. And press open. And now I have this image here. I have this selected here. What I should be able to do is I would prefer to just control C and copy the selection. And now control V to paste, there I am. The only thing I'd need to do is maybe make it make a little more sense, okay? So if I bring myself closer in the road, it looks slightly more realistic. I still look too big. Control T or edit. Free transform is what I wanna do. That'll let me resize like we're used to doing maybe in Microsoft Word. If you hold the shift key, it'll keep it proportional. So if I let go of shift, I can make myself way too skinny or way too fat. 
So hold shift and it'll keep it proportional. If I shrink myself down, that looks probably more, mm, not sure, but it's okay. So I'm gonna keep that. Now I need to save it as a PSD, just in case I wanna make changes, and a JPEG file. Save as, we did this before on our last project. Remember, you're gonna put it in your number drive, but I'm just gonna dump it right into my USB drive. It's automatically saving the name of the photograph, and that's not what we want. We're gonna call it Gillis Runs the World. A Photoshop PSD save. Whenever you get this dialog, just press OK. And now we're gonna do it again. File, save as. This time, oop. Oh, it's still working on it. My apologies. Save as. Instead of leaving it as a PSD, I'm going to choose JPEG and go ahead and save it. It would be in your number drive. I'm just going to put it in my thumb drive, my USB drive. And now I have it saved as a JPEG. This I would need to then upload to Google Classroom. So in my Google Classroom tab here, for you, you just want to navigate back to where the actual assignment is, and then you will be able to hit the drop down menu and choose that you want to upload a file. I can't see that because I'm the teacher and not the student. But that is how you're going to turn in, and that should connect all the dots from what we already talked about with the quick select tool and how you're actually going to use it for this project.